Hi, Conway. So I'm looking at your animation here, uh, at your blocking, and um, I think it's a lot clearer now without the bipeds and with a bit less motion going on. Uh, it would be still great to see the box here in the front so that we see that the, the, the beast is pointing at it. So I think that you really need it. And then uh, apart from that, uh, let's see what we have in here. So the first pose and the second pose, the way they act together is not really clear to me. I mean, if you're using the exterior of the left arm, let's think it through, to hit this guy, this box, then you would expect the uh, charging motion, the anticipation to go left and up, right? But if I go and look at the transition, what you're doing is you're lifting it up this way. So you can do it, I guess, if then on the way down, you go down, let's say this is the elbow, if then on the way out down, you, you move the elbow that way. Okay, so you go up, and you go left more, and then you swing. That's something, but in my opinion, it would make a lot more sense in general if you decided whether you want this anticipation to, to go from, from right to left up and then come back down using a different arc or above, for, so top from bottom right, top, from bottom right, sorry, to top left, then you reach the top and then you come back down. You need to take this decision right now it feels to me as if this decision has not be, been taken yet so you what you have is you have uh the character just bending that way and the blade just moving up i think you could go for for a bottom right top left going top right arc as you go up and then as you go down, in here you will need a breakdown between these two poses, and the breakdown will probably have the, the arm somewhere over here so that the arc will be this one. And this, I mean, if you're going to hit something that way with the intention of slashing, you don't want to hit it with the flat uh, part of your blade, you want to hit it with the narrow part of your blade, the part that chops, right, the part that slashes. So I think in here you, you need to have the, the arm a lot more rotated so that you're hitting it with the sharp part of your of your blade. And I don't think you want to have this massive change of silhouette on the left hand side, uh, well the right hand side of the character here, because if you look at it, you want the audience to follow your left arm, right? And that means you want the left arm to be the limb with the biggest spacing. Okay, but now the problem is that you change this silhouette so much that that seems to have a massive change of spacing. So now you're diluting our attention between two objects plus the head. And as a result, a, a, a big part of the audience may not even look this, at the slashing thing, but may look at this area of the screen, which you don't want. So in my opinion, in here, you need to keep the silhouette of the, of the right arm a lot more similar to the previous pose so that we see a lot more action going on in here in this area of the screen, which is where you want it to be anyway. And then you have a nice swing in there. In in here, you really need to decide, you really need a breakdown between these two poses because if I just see the two poses, I might even think that this right arm is this guy because the silhouette is very similar, you see? So it's very difficult to track that arm without having a breakdown there. So you really need a breakdown there. And again, you need to decide whether this arm is just swinging as a result of the motion of the momentum acquired earlier on, or if it's swinging as another hit. Right now, it's very wild there. So maybe you don't need to. Maybe you don't need to go that high. You can stay low there. So that's it. Then I'm not quite sure again this this is one of the moments where I think people tend to put animation down because they think the character needs to keep moving at all times so I'm not sure what this pose is and why you're taking away the silhouette of the right of the left arm from us and that's important and this character is not is is we we recognize this character because of the silhouette of the two slashing arms right if you hide that for a pose 
then you're telling us that's not the same character anymore. I know it's a bit extreme of an interpretation of the facts, but you have to understand that in a, in a movie theater, you really only have a few frames to understand what goes on on screen. So every pose, every pose matters in here. So, and then you have this pose in here where I don't know, I don't, I don't quite know what's going on in here um, and why you feel like you need to have that pose. So we have this pose, we come back, then we, I don't know why the body moves right and the and the the chest moves to the back, and the arms don't do anything and they move with the chest. I don't know what's going on in here. In my opinion, this pose is a no, no. I don't know what's. I mean, unless you have a reason to have it, I don't think you really need it. And if anything, on thirty-five, you need the arms to uh, relax a little bit as the monster is observing. Uh, the deed and do not. I mean, this is a box, yes, but it doesn't make it any any less of a character. If and and it still requires a silhouette. We know this box because of this, right? That's why we know the box because of this silhouette. If when the box falls down, the box becomes a square, that is not the same character anymore. So make it fall down so that we still see it's a box, it's the same. It's silhouette is so important in animation, so important. And every time your character becomes something else because of a different silhouette, then you're going to have an issue of readability. Then, then we have this sort of, um, I'm not quite sure in here, just uh, just a second. Let me get there. So this is a pose. This is a pose. I'm not quite sure in here why this leg is moving up and moving closer to the body, because the body is moving to the left. If you think of it, it's going to shift the weight over this guy. I'm not quite sure why you would want to move that leg. If anything as you slash you see how the leg is stretched and deformed there that's usually an indication that you could either twist the foot to have less deformation going on in here or a little step is needed to reassess the weight to move the weight to move the leg a bit closer to where the weight is so if anything as you move to this next pose the leg should open up rather than closing in that's my idea anyway and then so we are ready for the next um, uh, the next uh, movement. I'm not quite sure about this silhouette with the two arms, uh, but I don't have a proposal. Sorry about that. And And I'm not quite sure why you would be moving this leg forward when the body is sort of moving backward. I, I'm not. I don't, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, you should really take a play blast from this angle, from the from the side of the character. And that will tell you if your if your poses make any sense. Do it. Next time you show a blocking, put a picture in picture of this side view, and that will tell you a lot. In creature animation, we do it all the time. Because it's very difficult for the camera to know what goes on in a quadruped. There's so much stuff going on. So, and in here, it's also bizarre, in my opinion, that you have the foot in here, you lift it, and you sort of come back to the same position. Look at that. You just rotated it, which tells us that this was way too twisted. So I'm not quite sure you would do something like that. You would just lift the foot and put it back in the same position. If it's something about, I am prepared to do something, then I take it, but you need to show it with the rest of the body, not just with the foot. So, if anything, since we are about to prepare for the jump, you probably want to be a bit wider, a bit more, a bit more um, threatening with those feet and, and perhaps show us that you're about to to push on those feet so you, you give us a very angular pose in there you lower the body a lot more almost like a spider is about to jump if <laughs> some spiders do jump i think and that will give you the impression that you're pushing you're preparing for the push 
I think uh, in this pose at 103, I think you can compress a lot more with the body and go, go a, a lot more lower with the body. R raise the shoulder if you can. Almost cover the face with the clothes. And I think that will give you a, a stronger pose for the next uh, jump. And this jump in here, the extension is quite good. I, I feel like since you're moving, I feel like in 3D, this is, in 3D this is not working. Make a play blast from the top view and see if your character is doing this as it jumps or if you're doing this instead. Because it feels to me that you might be doing this second motion here, which doesn't make any sense if it's the case, right? Because you can't really fly, change the direction of the flight mid-air um, in, in, in real life. So you, even this guy wouldn't do it, okay? So make sure that from the top view, that makes sense. I mean, and don't worry, just, just post the top view as well in a picture-in-picture -picture somewhere without distracting from the main animation so that it's a lot easier to troubleshoot your animation. If you want to unlock high fidelity creature animation, you really need to do that. You really need to check that this thing works in 3D. And then once you're done and you think that it works reasonably well in 3D, you can tweak it based on camera. So we are pushing, I would expect it maybe to push a lot more forward there, but again, it depends on what this guy is doing in 3D. And then this pose in here is a bit, um, bit bizarre with the legs, I think. It feels like the body is is flying with the same angle it landed, it, it took off with. You see, it doesn't really rotate. But I would expect this to be a lot more stretched with the body pointing down there so that the back hip will be lo much lower and still a lot closer to the ground. And perhaps you could even, at this stage, you could even bend the front legs even more. So you have a bit more of a stretch going on in that character right there. And in here and on your last pose, um, you have the same problem of spacing that you have in other in other pose, I think. So you're telling us that the important, I mean, I guess what you want is that the important thing is the slashing of the, of the arms, right? So I gather, I mean, I wouldn't, uh, that's what I'm understanding. But if you look at it, what you are, I will just disable the drawings, what what moves the most, apart from this arm of course, is this leg. See that, how much movement there is in there, which now seems to imply that as an audience we should look at it. So in my opinion, if this is a slashing motion, it should be the heroes should be your, your arms and do not leave the frame with the tip of the left arm and the legs should be moving but reasonably similar to the next pose okay so that they don't take um, too much of the attention there and this is probably when the body could be higher yes uh, after it was lower earlier on so the back of the body could be higher there so and yeah we need the box in here to know what goes on and that's it and watch out i don't know what this pose is but probably you don't need it so a lot more clear than the last time indeed. Now the problem is that when you when you make it clear, when you refine that you, you're going into finer and finer detail. See how much time you want to spend on it, of course. I mean I'm I am assuming that you have plenty of time to deliver this shot. So I'm telling you what will make splining more effective as you read it as an audience. But if I don't know, if you have to deliver this thing tomorrow, of course, this is a great blocking, use it and just move on, okay? But you decide. Have fun.